right. So I just wanted to take a moment now that we've kind of gone over the very fundamentals, the basics of looking at the biliary system, mm -hmm. which for the, which I think in pediatric emergency medicine, point mm -hmm. of care ultrasound really shouldn't include looking for tumors or looking at biliary uh, structural abnormalities. I think it's fine if you identify those and pass them on so that a comprehensive image can be done. But uh, I think these are kind of the fundamental cores of the application. But how does this help us in our downstream care? Any, any thoughts? How is this a productive application? What do you think, Mir? <laughs> <laughs> For those of you following at home, there's a lot of thinking going on. <laughs> I think it's a discussion that we have all the time. So first of all, if you believe in your capabilities, so you can rule out, let's say, colitis or colitis and know that I mean, it's not... The pathology is not in there, so you need to search for something else. That's one thing. And if you find something and you will it in. So again, you can I mean contact gem surgeon, tell them, well, this patient needs to go eventually to the OR OR he needs to be admitted. If you want comprehensive, you don't want I know it depends on how your organization works. Um, so Right, so like, I always think the classic one for us, adolescent female comes in, right upper quadrant pain. We scan quickly in the emergency department, identify a stone, identify that there's no cholecystitis, that there's just cholelithiasis with pain, and do pain control and get the appropriate follow-up. And we probably don't even need, at that point, depending on how your system works, a comprehensive scan, because perhaps that can be done in the community. Um, there are some other situations where I think it's it may be helpful. You know, children with, you know, abdominal pain that's really undiagnosed. You know, kids that are high risk, kids on TPN, maybe a kid with KD. Um, but yeah, I think it's, again, it's one of those skills that I think it, it can help us uh, kind of in an unexpected way. Now, one thing I would I would be a little cautious of is that um, sometimes when people identify stones and there's non-specific pain in young, young kids, I do get a little nervous if they attribute it all to the stone. I don't know how Mark feels about that, but if, if a kid came in and they looked like they were in a lot of distress and I did a quick scan and I can't seem to really find anything, but then I do identify a stone, I would want to just be careful putting all of that onto, onto the cholelithiasis. Because I, in my experience and not, and still like practicing, but not seeing a lot of this in young kids, I don't have a good sense as to how much that can contribute. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that too, Mark. Um, I guess sort of similar to constipation, um, a lot of golf zones are gonna be chronic and I have had the, the kids where it's, they're older, it's the exact right biliary collar story. You look and see stones, you say, have you ever been diagnosed with stones before? And they say, no. And you're sort of like, well, it all fits yeah. nicely. I think if you have things like known stones and a new changing pain pattern, often these kids who have known stones will not have a history of pain. It will be like discovered incidentally or scan them for something else in a sick where, you know, looking at their spleen or something. So they have stones, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, stone. um, but sort of like, and they have constipation, the stone in the rectum. We always have to think like, what am I anchoring on? So I haven't had it happen too often just because it's not a huge yeah. volume of, uh, uh, stone kids that sort of flow through our ED. Yeah. Same uh, point that uh, a lot of time you could find um, stones incidentally on adults' population as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure how, how 
how to do fusion because we had a case uh, back in the UK where it was presented in a gastro conference as well where a teenager actually in similar chronic pain going to the clinics again and again and again ultimately did the scan and it found stones and the family was quite pushing to have them out when everyone felt the medicine body felt that it's not contributing and there was no effect of the colitis and then child ended up going to chronic pain teens and everything after a third year. Yeah. Well, we've so seen you know, a number of cases like that. If you have the bad luck to have you know, chronic functional abdominal pain oh, yeah. and incidental yeah. stones, yeah. you will probably yeah. at some point get your gallbladder removed yeah. and then be back in our frustrated way. <laughs> The good news is that that's often not an emergency decision to make. <laughs> we, just, we, just, we just find the news. Yeah. Found the stones and tell the family. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. So hopefully, um, this kind of brief overview of really the fundamentals of biliary point of care ultrasound have allowed you to recognize the advantage of its use and definitely. Um, if nothing else, you know, we couldn't assess the gallbladder by looking or by feeling. So it does give us that. And, and it's a scan that I think everyone in this room can learn and the studies demonstrate can be proficient in. I think there is an impact uh, on with downstream care in the right scenario. But as always, it's a piece of it. <laughs> so, where did you find that? You did it. All right. What was your string of terms? <laughs> <laughs> so if, uh, if if you have questions now or people that are watching later, uh, please feel free to, to email or tweet. Um, yeah, look forward to hearing from you. So thanks, everybody, for your attention and uh, engagement.